In Revit, curtain wall doors are completely different from all other kinds of doors. And to understand why this is, it's important to understand how curtain walls work. So clicking on the 3D view in the model, I'll zoom in on the curtain wall. Curtain walls are made up of three different parts. They're made up of mullions, curtain wall grids, and finally the curtain wall panels. Mullions, which are these parts here, which I'll hide, are attached to curtain wall grids, which are these invisible lines. It's the curtain wall grids that define the spacing and the placement of the mullions. Finally, the curtain wall panels are these parts which just fill in the space in between grids. So when you're creating a curtain wall door, it's simply just a modified panel that you swap out for that type. So to create a curtain wall door, go to File, New Family, and from the browser window, uh, choose a curtain wall door template, which is, in this case, door dash curtain wall, RFT, and click Open. You can see in the template that it's already defined a center reference plane line, and the reference planes on the edges with an EQ constraint. Since curtain wall panels um, are defined by the spacing in between the mullions, these refer reference planes are just place marks uh, for the mullions of the wall that it's going to be placed in. And so uh, the width of this panel and its height is going to be determined by the spacing of those mullions. And so in a curtain wall panel, you're not going to predefine its width. It's, it's just going to be uh, whatever the width is in between the, the mullions that this panel gets placed into. So really, other than um, not predefining a width and height for this door, you're going to draw it out pretty much like you draw out any other door. So I'll fast forward through this process since I've already covered it um, in the previous door models. So I'm going to go to uh, an exterior view. And I'm just going to lay out reference planes uh, to define the, f the frame of this uh, curtain wall door. So starting on the sides, I'll lay down reference planes for its thickness. The head. and a toe kick. I'll then want to go back to the floor plan view and lay out reference planes, which will be the frame thickness and thickness for the glass, which I'll fast forward and do. And once the reference planes are laid down um, for the geometry, uh, it's time to go ahead and, and draw the, uh, the geometry, which will be the door frame. So going back to an exterior view, um, we'll choose a solid form extrusion tool and lay out the outside and inside edges. And then align and lock the edges to their respective reference planes. Again, all this has been covered in the previous um, door video. Once all the edges are aligned and locked, I'll hit Finish Sketch and go back into the floor plan view and align and lock to make sure that its depth is locked to the reference planes. Now that I've done that, um, we need to uh, dimension the reference planes and then apply parameters to the dimensions. So I'll fast forward through that process. You can see in the floor plan of um, EQ constrained to the center line and then applied a parameter for the frame depth. And I've also locked uh, a dimension for the glass depth. Um, going back into an exterior view, um, I'll go ahead and lay down uh, dimensions and parameters for the frame thickness. And though I don't want to um, create a parameter for its width and height, because that will be determined by the mullion spacing, um, I do want to lock these. Uh, parameters in for its thickness so that the frame moves with the, the width and height of the door. So going to the option bar at the top, I'll click uh, Add Parameter in the pull-down list and give it a name and call it a dimension. Hit 
OK. And I'll do a separate one uh, for the toe kick. After I've created uh, the, the frame geometry, um, I also want to create uh, the geometry for the glass, so it follows the same process. So I use a solid form extrusion tool, use a rectangle tool, draw it out, align and lock it this time to the inside reference plane. And I want to be sure to align and lock it to the reference plane and not the uh, geometry of the frame. Um, finish sketch, go to a floor plan, and make sure to align and lock uh, it in depth. Once the glass has been uh, created, you want to select it and right-click on its element properties and change its material out um, to be glass so that it's uh, transparent and click OK. Now that you have the basic geometry down for the door, um, you probably want to uh, draw out a door handle or some other features uh, of this uh, storefront or curtain wall door. I'm going to go back to the exterior view. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that uh, whatever features to the door you're going to add, for example, hardware, a door handle, uh, you need to make sure that they're constrained in place so that they move with the width of the door. So what that means, if I want a simple handle here, um, I want to lay down reference planes for it, and I want to dimension them away from its edge, the door edge, so that it moves with the width of the door. So for example, this will be the edge of the handle. Come back in here and just define all the edges of this handle, left and right side, and top and bottom with reference planes. And they need to be dimensioned from the outside edges of the door. For a simple rectangular handle, um, I just have these four reference planes, but it can get as complicated as you need it to be. Um, I can apply a, a parameter to this width if I want to change um, how far the distance is from the, the, the door handle from the edge. Um, and if these dimensions don't change, you can always lock them into place. Finally, uh, you can draw out what this handle will be with model lines, or you can use an, ex an extrusion also. And make sure to align and lock them to their respective reference planes. Finish sketch, and make sure you go back into the floor plan mode view, and align and lock the handle. And if I go to a 3D view, you can see an extruded handle. Finally, uh, you'll want to save uh, the the door out. And load it into a project. To place the door into the wall now, what you need to do is you need to select the wall panel. And um, using the filter tool is the easiest way to, to select the wall panel out. And then swap it out using the family type selector. So to do this, um, I can go back into a floor plan view. And anywhere I want this door to go, I I'll just do a selection over the whole thing. And using the filter tool, um, check just the curtain panel. This selects just the curtain panel. I want to make sure that it's um, unpinned. And then using the type selector at the top, uh, swap it out for the door type. And if I go back to an elevation, uh, you should see the new door in here.